Howdy, brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, I, I'm a I'm a firm speaker on unity. Uh, but like I said, that's the Lord prayed for unity, for us to be as one as He and the Father is one. That's a mighty unity. Because I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> If you really look around you and even examine in yourselves, are you as one together with your brethren as the Lord was with the Father? Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, that means this and that means that. And then they bring up that word context and we get opinions going back and forth. And, you know, something It's just I'm old country boy and I like to keep things simple. It's real easy. Unity as one together. We see that uh, God, the Word of God, Spirit of God work together as one in unity for one purpose. Okay, so I'm a firm preacher. If you want to say I'm preaching, I'm a firm teacher. If you want to say I'm a teacher, uh, I just call myself a man with a Bible. I'm nothing more than just a man with a Bible that has a heart for God and for God's people. So, today though, we're going to go another route. My machine's going crazy. Somebody is sending me a bunch of pictures. I wish people would. Uh, okay. So, today I'm going to go the flip side of that. I'm still going to be speaking on unity. But I'm going to speak on the flip side of that coin on divisional unity. Unity through division, however you want to say it. Uh, the Lord God, our Savior, the King, is very clear on two issues. Unity and division. Both of them are required of the saints. Both of them are required of the saints. They are a charge from God. You see what Paul says, I charge you to do such and such. They are a charge from God. And you can go as far as say that they're part of, they're, one of, they're a commandment. If they're a charge, that he, he's telling you this is it. So, uh, but uh, as these two issues in the world, they say that they're different. Uh, in God's word, they go hand in hand. You know, we see in Matthew 12, 25 through 26, the Lord speaking some words. Now, y'all go try it over to your Bible, open that up, and see what he says. See, in Mark 3, 23 through 27, the same thing. Go just get your Bible and go there. I'm not going to do all the work for you. I want you to get up and, and do some work yourself. It's called provoking you unto good works, stirring that gift up. In Luke 11, 14 through 20, we see the Lord speak. As well in Matthew 10, 34 through 39, and as well Luke 12, 51 through 54. <clears throat> now the Lord prayed in John 17 unto the Father that the saints become one as he and the Father is one. I got news for you. This is a will of God that you do such. This is a will of God that you do such. Uh, so today we're going to go through some things. I've got a, I've got a, about 10 verses pulled up here and prepared. And I'm just going to click through them and we're going to roll through them. Now remember, today I'm not speaking on unity. I'm speaking on division that brings unity. Okay, uh, let's start off with old Proverbs 1. I like Proverbs. Everybody likes Proverbs, don't they? Proverbs thirteen twenty. He that walketh with wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools be destroyed. Translation, we are not supposed to walk as the unwise or as fools. That's somewhere else in Scripture, if I remember right. I think I spoke on that not long ago. So I'm going to X that one out. Now, see, this is division. 
We're not supposed to be a part of that, so we're dividing ourselves from those people. Uh, we are, who walk with wise unity will be wise, but a companion that fools, if you're in unity with a fool, you're going to be destroyed. So we divide ourselves from the fools as not to, to be destroyed. Okay, uh, let me get another proverb pulled up here. Proverbs 22, uh, 24 through 25. Listen to this one. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go. Lest, now listen, and this is why. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare on thy soul. Now, let's look at this for a moment. Because you know something? Our Lord and our God and our King and Savior, he got angry. He got upset at times. He got a little furious. So here we have to have some discernment on who is what and what is righteous anger. We need to understand that. We're allowed to be angry as long as we don't sin. And you know something as well? Uh, we're supposed to hate what God hates. We cannot love like God loves, like we're told to love. We cannot do such until we understand and learn also as well how to hate how God hates and what God hates. You will never love like God until you hate like God. Now, you need to understand that one. Okay, uh, so let's go up here. We'll mark that one out there. And we go to, well, now we got some Psalms. Does everybody like Psalms? Psalms 1-1 one, has always been on the top board with me. I just like it. It's so simple. It's so self-explanatory. There should be no confusion. You don't have to bring in the word context or any of that other junk. Okay. Blessed the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is that man. So how do we do that? We don't be in unity with them. We divide ourselves. We subtract ourselves from that number. And we come into unity under God. So uh, let me mark that one out there. And we'll get next one. We got Psalms 26, 4 through 5. I have not sat with vain persons. Oh, man. Do you remember them days? I do. Man, I that used to be, if, if I wasn't sitting with vain persons, I, I just wasn't content <laughs> until God got a hold of me. Uh, I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers. Ooh, look at that, see, we can't hate. Uh, and will not sit with the wicked. Whew. All right, so now we're going to get out of the Psalms and the Proverbs, and we're going to go to one of my favorite things. We're going to we're going to a pastoral epistle, because see, this is wrote to the overseers. Now a lot of it's me, and and some babes can't they ain't there yet as far as uh, performing some of the duties that are we are supposed to do as saints. These are the pastoral epistles. These this don't get me wrong. A, a babe, you need to look at him and say, "Look, that's my goal. That's where I want to be." Like, like if you're in high school, I mean, you're you're in, uh, starting the kindergarten or the first grade. You see, your your uh, goal is to graduate from high school. Well, this should be one of your goals to grow up into this right here. Uh, so let me go to uh, Titus three ten. Uh, a man that is a heretic after the first and second. A motion, a, a, I can't say that word today for some reason. It ain't more to come. Uh, correction. Let me just go with this. Let me keep it simple. Uh, a man that is a heretic after second, uh, first and second of correction or reject. You know what that means? That means I don't have to be on social media and just keep on throwing, pasting copies. Be on, uh, we keep on going. I don't have to do that. Matter of fact, we're charged not to. Do you understand that? If we, I'm just going to say it like it is. If I admonish someone two times, 
and I don't reject them, and I continue on, I am in transgressional sin. I, I, I've done stepped into the flesh. I'm wanting to prove something. I'm wanting to get something, you know. I'm in sin. All right. But Brother Andy, we're supposed to speak the word of God because it don't return. I ain't getting into that teaching. Let me go. Let me go. Uh, now we're going to get into uh, one of the first epistles that Paul wrote was to the Thessalonians. That was the first one. First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. So today I'm going to go to Second Thessalonians uh, 3, uh, 6. Uh, now we command you, ooh, command, listen, hear up, listen, listen. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother. I'm going to repeat that. Like the Lord said every now and then, barely, barely, then he'd say again, barely, barely, I say. Sometimes he had to say something twice to get it through our thick skulls. Now we command ye, brethren, in the name, that's under the authority of the king, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. Oh, crap. Yeah. Now that don't, we, we got to take the full counsel of God in, remember? We go to the brother, we try to correct him, we try to correct him, we try to correct him, they don't, but... It's not like somebody does wrong with your soul. It, it comes, it's, it's, it's God's divine order that we're, there's a process to this. But when that time comes, that walketh disorderly. Mm. Now, remember, a babes, any babes out there? Y'all might not even know what disorder is because some of y'all still on, on your knees and hands are in the crib going, get, 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 be fed milk. Or some of you might be crawling on your knees and you'll cross the floor. Some of you might be learning how to walk, but you're still falling every now and then. Okay, look, you need to be careful when you start making judgment on who is and who ain't disorderly. Okay? This is for this is for people that, that has had a little meat, has a little understanding, spiritual elders. Okay, uh, and not after tradition, uh, after tradi the tradition that he received of us. Okay, uh, see how this division, this, this division keeps unity, but there must be division. It's just as much it goes hand in hand with unity. Here is one of somebody. Here, here's one to go up here and get this other Second Thessalonians out of the way. Second Thessalonians three fourteen. Uh, and if any man obey not all word by this epistle. Okay, so if you ain't withdrawing yourself from those that's walking disorderly, if you're not obeying that word, I'm supposed to note that man. You're supposed to note that man. Let me just read the verse. And if any man obey not all word by this epistle, note that man. Oh, words, mark him. Call him out. And have no company with them. Okay, and have no company with them. We don't go. We we don't go to them and pray through it. We don't love them through it. We don't look. We have no company with him. Why? Why? Here's the interesting thing: that he may be ashamed. But we're not supposed to shame a brother and sister. Oh, have no company with him. Why? That he may be ashamed. I cannot shame you, my brother, nor my sister. I cannot shame you. Shame is something you, is produced in you, not by me, but by your actions. Yeah, by your actions. I can't, sh I can't make you ashamed. Okay, so let's go up here. See how division it's, it's division, but division keeps unity. First Corinthians five says this. Remember, Paul said, "Put that boy out, so his soul may be saved in the day of the Lord." Throw him out to the devil. 
other words, put let him go back out in the world if that's where he wants to be. Uh, just let him go. But that was a commandment. Paul didn't say, you know something, y'all y'all take a boat and y'all can either put him out or not put him out. It's up to you. No, Paul said, put that boy out. As in prayer in hopes that his soul might be saved in the day of the Lord. Division brings unity. Paul says, in this we are keeping the feast of unleavened. Now, we don't keep the feast of the unleavened in a physical. We keep it in spiritual. It's not the bread and all that stuff. We keep our, we keep the body pure. How do you do that? Division. Division. Through that division, unity is brought back. Unity. Okay. This is a good one. Now, listen up to this one right here. 1 Corinthians 15.33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now, we all know that hanging around in the world, we have need for that. Paul said, we got to have need. You know, you, you work out there among the unbelievers. You, you hop out there beyond among them. So you have need to be out there. But if, if, you, if you're rubbing shoulders with them, you can become corrupted. They could it corrupt your good man. So, this division, hey, this is a division again. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians. I'm saving, really, I'm saving the best for last. 2 Corinthians 6.14. Listen, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? Brother and sister, I, I'm going to be honest with you. This one right here is one of the most violated charges among the saints. So, we're just going to get out of that one. And I'm going to go to the last one I got pulled up here. Remember, we were speaking on B divisions. Division is, is, is just as much a part as unity. They go hand in hand. So let's look at here at something. Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech ye, brethren, mark them which cause division. And offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Now, I'm just sitting here speaking on how we need to uh, subtract ourselves from the number we need to divide. Is that me causing division? No, that's me keeping the bread, the, the, the body pure. That's me contending for my faith. That's me being obedient to the Word of God. Well, but but you're causing a division. See, I'm causing a division right here with this word I'm speaking. If you're listening, if the spirit, my, the spirit in me is speaking to you, you're understanding this that I'm I'm speaking division. I'm I, in in a, in a term, in a sense, I am causing a division. So now, I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine you have learned. Division is godly unless it comes by an offense. Now, these are the offenses. I had a brother, and he wants so much something, and I'm not going to really get into the detail of what he wants, but he spoke on this thing that causes great division is called pre-tribulation. And I might have spoke on this before and I'm going to say it again because here's where it really it stands out here as an example. Uh, and I told him, I said, look, okay, this this is how I teach the matter of, and I don't, I really don't call it pre-tribulation. I don't call it that. Because that's not the teaching. The teaching is of the catching up of the saints. That's the teaching. It ain't got nothing to do with it. Pre-mid and all that ain't got nothing. 
do with tribulation. It's it's really the catching up of the saints, isn't it? So I said, this is what I teach on the catching up of the saints. In Matthew 24, the Lord said, learn the parable of the fig tree. Then we go to the revelation that God says he laid the government on the back of Jesus Christ. Now, nothing's hid from, from Jesus no more. There were some things that Jesus, remember Jesus said, only the Father knows. Well, see, now the King knows. He got to. <laughs> so God, this is the revelation that God gave to him. And it's called Revelation. If you go to Revelation 16, you'll see a whole bunch of black letters. And you'll see right in the middle there, verse 15, read. And it says, Blessed are the watchful. And it continues on with some other words. Okay, but, but that's the saints. Okay, it can't be nothing but the saints. If you say anything else, I'm sorry, you're just, you're, you're ignorant. Blessed are the watchful. He said, I'm coming as a thief in the night. Right there, right there, in, in red letter, right in the middle of all that. Now, if you look at all that, you know something? It don't say nothing about any part of man's tribulation. Now, it's not about the tribulation. It's about the time of the gathering, the catching up. It's speaking of God's wrath. So, I said, that's it. Learn the parable of the fig tree. Boom. Revelation 16. There you go. He said, well, no, that's not, we need to go more deeper. And I said, no, I don't. The teaching's over. And he said, well, what about the 144? Well, see, I just had to break it off. Because personally, who is the 144? When I, who, that ain't got nothing to do with my salvation. That has got nothing to do with, with me. And if you read it, it tells you who the 144 is. Now, do we want to get in discussion with that physical, the spiritual? It, it ain't in my epistle. Paul, Paul didn't say that I need to know who the 144 is. Okay? I'm just going to be honest with you. Paul didn't say nothing about it. If, if I need to know who the 144,000, Paul had told me. If I needed to, Paul would have said, okay, you need to know this, so here it is. I'm not saying ignore the revelation. What I'm saying is, it's not a part of our gospel. So therefore, it, it's it, it's okay. I know there's going to be 144. Why? God said it. Who are they going to be? It says 12 out of 12 times. 12 times 12 is 144. So 12 out of each 12 times. There's 104. Who's it going to be? That's what God said. And as far as I can teach on it. Anything more than that, I put my opinion in on it. So. But he wanted to keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on. And I just told him. I can't, I, 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 teaching's over. You asked me this question about the catching up. I guided you to the scriptures. Teachings over. Oh, no, no. There's more to it than that. No, there's not. See, there's some people out there that want to just keep going back and forth so they can show how much doctrine, how much scripture they know. Excuse me. Because it's not doctrine they know. How much scripture they know. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'll tell you this. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it again, and again, and again, because I'm like Peter on this. As long as I'm in this old vessel, I'm going to bring you to remembrance of some things. It takes one portion of God's spoken word to answer any question that you got. I don't need to have 1,500 different descriptions. I don't need to bounce you all over the Bible to get your answer. I can get any question you got that pertains to salvational issues. I will give you one portion of God's spoken word. And, and that's going to be it. And you can either accept that or not. But me... Most likely, I'm going to move on. Because, see, I've gotten very good at discerning who really wants to have understanding that's asking a question, and I'll walk with you, and I will talk with you, and I'll hold your hand as long as it's needed. But if I discern that you're nothing but somebody that likes to sow discord or show off how much scripture you know, me and you, brother, will divide. And I won't have, I won't have nothing to do with it. Personally, I ain't got time for that. 
it ain't got time for that. For one thing, I'm not going to be a witness to a lost and dying world that two people can't agree on God. is. I'm going to show you the word. You accept it as truth and, and, and move on to the next stage of perfection or I'm going to leave you behind. See, this is where discernment is really, really a necessity. That's why I said, babes, this is the tough area for you. Now, if you have an issue like that, what you need to do as a babe in Christ, who's a skillful word of righteousness, you need to seek out wise counsel. That means go to an elder, a spiritual elder, not just an elder. Please just don't go to somebody that's been in the... Just, uh, please don't do that. Go to a, one that you know is a spiritual elder. And ask them. And, and get some wise counsel. Okay, so, division and unity. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. I got news for you. There's many, many saints in sin right now because of that. I'll give you one person right off the bat that causes division. Because of doctrine. John MacArthur. Benny Hinn. Joel Osteen. Charles Stanley. And the list goes on and on and on. Mark them. And avoid them. I'm going to tell you, really, the best thing in the world that you could do, and I hate saying this because I'd miss you, but the best thing that a saint could do is shut down Google, YouTube, and any of that junk, all that trash. Don't get me wrong. It can be used for good, but there's more to evil going out there than is good. Shut it down. You get your Bible. Prayfully, it was a King James. I'm not a King James cult person, but I tell you, I still advise on the King James. I'm not going to hate you because you read NIV and ESV. I'm not going to do that because I believe the Holy Spirit can, can, can speak to you. It don't matter what translation you got. The Holy Spirit can speak to you. So I don't, I, I'm not a cult person on that. I just, I prefer a King James. But you take your Bible and you go off in a cave somewhere. Other words, I don't mean go out in a little cave. But you take your Bible and you shut down your building assembly. You shut down YouTube, commentaries, any of that garbage. And you get along with your Bible and God for about six months. Read Paul's epistles in order. 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Galatians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and on and on. You can, you can, if you want to know the order, you contact me, I'll send you the order. But God had order in his word too that was given to us saints. But you get off alone for about six months. And you just start feeding on the word of God. Ignore old brother Anthony. Don't ever come to my YouTube site. Ignore everybody. And if any teacher tells you any different, they tell you wrong. I'm going to tell you something. There was a reason that Paul had to go in the desert for three years. There was a purpose behind that. Because when he came out, he was strong in God. <coughs> so, Hey, I love y'all. I'm always praying for those things that needful. And remember, God, one of God, part of God's will is for the unity. Because see, there's going to be a church that the gates of hell can't, that won't prevail over. But right now, uh, the gates of hell is doing a pretty good job on some saints. But the final product, 
the gates of hell can't come over. It's going to be there. It's a done deal. The church, the church is going to be there. The gates of hell can't stop what's fixing to come. But I guarantee you one thing. They're going to steal, kill, and destroy as many of the saints as they can. And I pray that you're not one of them. But I got news for you. God's very clear. Many are called. But there's only going to be a few that's chosen. Okay? Now, you can take it as you want it. I love you, and I'm praying for you, and, and I'll see you all next time around.